All right, guys. So I came across this video. Um, this girl here, she's talking about white privilege and how it's affecting black people today. The title of the video or her video is called Black Lives Matter. She starts the video off talking about George Floyd and how the deaths of black people have been going on. Basically, the same thing LeBron James said, how black men are being hunted down in America. So I thought it'd be interesting to go ahead and get into this video and give you guys my two cents from a black man's perspective on white privilege. Let's get into it. Obviously, the killing of black people and the abuse of black people from powerful police officers is nothing new. And she's absolutely right. When you're breaking the law, running away from police officers, when you're resisting actively by fighting police officers, that absolutely happens where a black man or a black woman may be shot um, in the commissions of in the commission of committing a crime by a police officer. And it's really just one part of the overarching issue that is racism. As a white person, I recognize that I have so much privilege. Just <laughs> that's my favorite part of this whole video guys i really want to know in today's society what how would you exactly define white privilege so if i had a doctor my both of my parents if my if both of my parents were doctors and you have a white person who grew up in a rural area by a single mother who was a grocery store clerk who has more privilege in today's society, the store, the, the girl with the store clerk mom, because she's white, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is what she's talking about is the foundation of critical race theory, where basically it's just assuming that because you are white, you have inherited privilege over the next person which makes you inherently racist or you have to acknowledge that, hey, um, I'm a step above black people. I need to feel sorry for myself or I need to feel sorry for black people. I honestly feel like if you could say you have white privilege with a straight face, how are you any different than white supremacists that you claim to be against? Because you're basically acknowledging with pride, oh, I'm better or I have advantages and privileges over others because of my whiteness how is that any different than a white supremacist let's get back into it because of the color of my skin i will never begin to imagine what it feels like to be black in america same as you uh, and i will never have the same experience or the same relationship so the black experience i feel like that term is said too loosely like there is no black experience no white experience you're either born with successful parents that give you the advantages of life like going to good schools growing up in a good neighborhood that is that's not based on race i think that's more so based on class and where you stand financially but the experience of a successful white person in America is no different than the experience of a black person in America. And I really think that as a country, we need to start pushing back on this critical race theory and this white privilege, white guilt mentality, because all it's doing is further separating America. I don't know if you guys have read Candace Owens book Blackout, but she mentions in the book how progressives can be so progressive kind of overly progressive that they're actually regressing but let's continue with a police officer that a black person has i've never had to go out of my way to not look suspicious or not look guilty and if you're not sagging your pants if you're not coming in a store with an attitude a bad attitude then you won't have any problems with a police officer if you comply with the instructions of the police officer then you won't have any issues with the with the police officer what she's saying is basically black people innately have a issue with police officers so it doesn't matter what i do 
it doesn't matter what actions I take, I'm automatically going to have a conflict with a police officer. That's racist mentality. In front of a police officer. I've always been taught that if you are in danger and you need help, that police officers are who you call. I've never felt too. that a police officer would do anything other than protect me. Me either. And that is my privilege. Not everyone can say that. So if you... They can say that police officers are there to protect them. Police officers are still there to protect you even when you're committing a crime. The fact is, is that you have a subpopulation of people and it's not just black people, but I'm talking about criminals in general who they don't care whether they go to jail, whether they live or die. They have no respect for society. They don't have no respect for themselves. They don't have any respect for authority. That's why they resist arrest. That's why they put police officers in positions where they have to use lethal force to gain compliance of the suspect and to gain control over the situation are white and you don't recognize that privilege that there is no white privilege in america and we need to go back and start there because i think step one is recognizing your privilege and recognizing that there is a problem i mean if you can watch those videos of george floyd being murdered and not see the problem i've seen similar tactics applied to suspects who happen to be white it's not that they're applying these tactics because the suspect is black they're applying these tactics to restrain an individual who isn't complying with lawful orders from the police it has nothing to do with whether you're white or you're black and i'm not attacking this girl directly i mean i just don't think based off what she's saying she's done her own research or she's informed about the situation I think that she's getting a lot of her information from mainstream media and a lot of critical race theory that they tend to push in colleges and stuff like that. But let's get into it some more. I just don't understand. And that is just one example. There are so many of those videos and so many pictures. It's never ending. So then as a white person who does recognize that those videos and those pictures that she's referring to, how many of those people were absolutely doing nothing? Flying a, flying a kite, licking a lollipop, doing absolutely nothing, and the police officer just killed him for no reason. 90% of those shootings and those videos and photos that she's talking about, these are black people who were committing crimes and in some cases were resisting arrest, which caused the officers to react with lethal force. They have so much privilege. What can I do I to help now. and to actually contribute to making a difference and moving things forward? I think the next- What you can do is you can encourage people to obey the law, encourage people not to do things that cause them to get encounters with police. And if they happen to have an encounter with the police, what you can do is use your platform to encourage people to follow instructions that are given by police officers. That's the best way that you can reduce these shootings, by these police shootings that happen in America today. Next really big step is educating yourself. And this is an- That's something that she did not do. Ongoing process, but educating yourself allows you to have more elevated conversations with people about what's going on in the world. Also, I just wanna note that I totally understand if you are someone that is white and you're not used to having these types of political conversations that it can be really intimidating. I totally get that. Because it is such a delicate subject, you really don't wanna say the wrong thing. You don't want to. About that, guys, as long as you're sticking to the facts, I don't care if you're white, black, Hispanic, Asian. If you're sticking to the facts, the facts doesn't have a race. It doesn't have a religion. Facts are facts. It's not based off of feelings or emotion. When you stick to the facts, you're keeping it real about what's going on. That's how you start the change. That's how you help people see where the problem is and where to start fixing it. You come across as ignorant you don't want to offend anyone I totally get that facts not feelings so some people just shut down and avoid the conversation altogether but I saw a post on Instagram that really said it perfectly and that is 
that it's no longer enough for us to just be not racist. We have to be actively anti-racist. That's critical race theory right there. What is anti-racism? Isn't anti-racism affirmative action? Isn't integrated schools anti-racist? Isn't Obama becoming the first black president anti-racist? See, this is why that passage in Blackout, the book Blackout, stood out to me so much. Is that you got people who are like this, who are overly progressive. She's been taught or she feels what I call white guilt. You feel like you have privilege from another time that you did not grow up in. You are not a slave master. You don't know any slave masters. There is no privilege in America. And then, of course, from the left, they'll probably say, well, white people get preferences over jobs and stuff like that. Well, if if that's the case and a black person and a white person interview for a job and a black person doesn't get it and a white person get it. And then it comes out that, oh, OK, there was some preference there that the hiring manager preferred a white candidate over a black one. Why would the black candidate want to work for somebody like that anyways? The thing is, is racism is never going to be extinguished in this not just in the country, but in the world. There's always going to be racism everywhere you go. It's how you respond to it. But trying to, I feel like the progressives, they're trying to emphasize race. And they shouldn't, race shouldn't be a factor. And when you got organizations like Black Lives Matter, it's like you're trying to propel black people above white people. You want white people to feel guilty and feel like they have to apologize for something that they did not do, apologize for a time that they were not a part of, which I'm referring to slavery. And they get gullible girls like this to get on camera and say, and she doesn't work for Black Lives Matter. I think she has like a cosmetology channel or something like that. But all I'm saying is there is no anti-racism. I mean, you become anti-racist by not focusing on race but when you are constantly coming up with these far left ideas emphasizing race to me you're becoming more divisive when it comes to race you're, you're using race as a divisive tool which is racism to actually make a difference i'm actually pretty used to having conversations like this because of where i grew up in the town that I grew up in, in New Jersey, it is extremely diverse. I moved there at the start of my eighth grade, and I've just always been taught to celebrate that. So I, I think New Jersey is pretty liberal, so she probably hasn't spoken or had these or expressed these thoughts to a conservative and had a constructive debate with a conservative about these ideas that she's having. And I think if she did, I don't think that she would have made this video diversity so throughout high school we were always so political and we were always encouraged to speak up for what is right and we would protest all the time and we were just always encouraged to have those conversations that might be a little more difficult um and i remember we had this club at my high school it was called diversity rocks and they would host these like open forums after school where so many students would show up and just have open conversations about topics like racism or other topics too like gender and sexual orientation and just social issues like that it was the best but sometimes i have to check myself because living where i grew up was a bubble in and of itself and literally you can drive 10 minutes over to the town next door and things were completely different like lack of diversity blatant racism it was crazy how different two towns that are 10 minutes away from each other could be. So even though I am so grateful for growing up where I did, I have to remind myself that not everyone grew up in a community where conversations about racism were so common. Like I said, racism is never going to go away in America. If I was racist or racist white person, I don't want to be around blacks. I'm going to move to an area that's going to be more predominantly white. 
So if a black person grows up in that predominantly white area, the chances of them running across a race, a racist person is, I would say, pretty high. But is that racist person that that black person encounters indicative of the entire nation? I don't think so. I don't think that a small population of white supremacists represents the entire population of the country. And I don't think that a few instances where there were or may have been some discriminative practices, I'm sorry, discriminatory practices is indicative of systemic racism in America. I'm so encouraged. So if you are someone that feels like you need to help but you're nervous to have those types of conversation and you don't really know where to start, I would say just looking into resources that will help you further educate yourself is really the first step. And knowledge is power, truly. And there's like no better feeling than being able to have a high level conversation with someone about a topic and actually feel like you know what you're talking about and like have facts to back yourself up there's literally nothing better than that so education is everything i posted a ton of research 100 percent, she's right education is everything and this is why i encourage people to don't just listen to mainstream media actually look at the body cam footage of a lot of these shootings that get you guys riled up and want to protest and want to loot and I'm not saying that that's what this girl is doing, but I'm just saying that you have to actually do the research yourself. Don't let mainstream media spoon feed you clips of videos that they want you to see, spoon feed you information that paints their narrative. Actually look up the information yourself. Look at body cam footage. Look up state legislature. And from there, you can make a determination if someone was in the wrong or so-and-so was in the right whether the police officer was wrong whether the suspect was right but don't just assume because somebody's black that automatically they get a pass that okay just because somebody's black i gotta kiss his ass and assume that he was doing nothing wrong and the police officers was just taking advantage of him that's the problem that i have with these leftists out here is that they want the blacks they want black people to be on a pedestal above everyone else. And like I said, the more progressive you get, it's like you can sometimes become too progressive that you're regressing. And we already know when back in civil rights time, there was definitely white supremacy during that time. It was definitely discriminatory practices during that time. And nobody had to hide it either. But in today's society, I cannot say as a black man that there is white supremacy on a systematic level like it was back in Jim Crow days like it was when Martin Luther King was marching you see people they always want to talk about Black Lives Matter they always want to talk about Black History Month but they never really acknowledge what Martin Luther King actually did he already won the fight that people like this are trying to spark back up again I'm about treating people equal and judging them on the contents of their character and their level of self-respect and integrity and that's how i feel like this girl right here she should be also doing the same thing don't just assume that black people are in a lower or less position than you are because you're white that is the foundation of racism in itself and white supremacy in itself white supremacy is believing that white people are superior to every other race and by you saying that, oh, I acknowledge my privilege, I acknowledge that I have advantages over a black person, you're just repeating the same thing that you claim to be fighting again. Resources on my Instagram stories and I saved them to a highlight on my Instagram. They were all suggestions from you guys. So there was a ton of books, documentaries, podcasts. There's just, just so much the that are this important. Educate yourself, please. That way you're really equipped to have conversations with your peers and actually know what you're talking about. Also, it's so important right now to check in with your black friends and just ask them how they're doing because once again, as white people, we will 
never be able to feel the way that they're feeling. I mean, how racist is that? Hey, black friend, by just what she's saying, it's almost like you're insinuating that your black friend is in a weaker position than you. She's not equivalent to you. So I got to check on my black friend because I know that I'm in a superior position than he or she is. You see what I'm saying? Like the left, they try to go so woke. They go so woke that they end up becoming the same thing that they claim to be fighting against. You know what I mean? Trust me that black people <clears throat> are flourishing just as anybody else in this country if they put the work in and they put their mind to it. These black people that they are printing out on shirts, putting on back of jerseys, these black people are not the representation of the black community. These are criminals that broke the law. And in most cases, not all, but in most cases, they were resisting arrest. And that's what ultimately got them killed. About this topic. So just check in. How are you doing? How are you feeling? Um, and just listen to them, listen to their feelings, validate their feelings, and like all we can really do Validate their feelings? That's the problem. You don't need to validate somebody's feelings. You need to present the facts. The fact is, there is no white supremacy in America today. There are some Americans who may believe in that ideology, but on a systematic level, that is not an American value. That is not on a systematic level, on a systematic scale in America. Um, I don't believe in validating someone's feelings. I believe in validating the facts. Facts don't even need to be validated. Facts are facts. I believe in presenting the facts. Do right now is be supportive and listen. So that's also super, super important. Financially, I also shared a ton of organizations on my Instagram stories where you guys can donate. And I will also list a bunch in the description down below. I and this is how Black Lives Matter got, what, 90, over $90 million? And did any of that money go to the black community? Did any of that money go to the families of these criminals that got killed by the police? You see what I'm saying? If she did research, she would know that donating to financial processors like AgBlue, which is a financial processor for uh, the Democrat party she would know that her money isn't going to black communities that her money isn't funding any community programs to help black people in inner cities better themselves and this is how black lives matter takes advantage of people like this who doesn't do research and how they can raise billions of dollars in such a short amount of time because most people think like this. They think that black people are in an inferior position and they want to help. They want to do the right thing in their mind. They donate money to Act Blue, not knowing what it is, just seeing the banner Black Lives Matter. They think their money's going to a good cause and that money isn't even going to the black communities in any way. Where is the money going? People are still asking that question till this day. Let's continue. I know times are really tough financially right now, but if you have anything to spare, there is no amount too small. And also, I turned monetization on on this video because no, I'm saying second, blue testing is not the same as riots. So my first point was just that protesting is not the same as rioting, and protesting is not the same as looting. So it's just important to differentiate those. And I agree. Protesting isn't the same as looting, but we're noticing a trend as protesting is going on during the day. As the day transitions to the evening, these protests start to turn into riots. And then second, the majority of the protests that happened over the last weekend were peaceful or at least started with peaceful intentions. There was a big protest in Newark, New Jersey, which is like right next to me. And it was huge and was 100% peaceful. And Newark is a predominantly black community. And there were literally police officers marching alongside the people. And it was just really 
beautiful and really effective and was completely peaceful but I feel like I didn't really see much if any coverage in the media of that protest it's just important to note that that's because the looting and the rioting gets more ratings than peaceful protesting there are peaceful protests going on and like 99% of protests started with peaceful intentions. The problem is when peaceful, unarmed protesters are met with aggressive police officers that are... When peaceful protesters are met with aggressive officers, or is it when officers are met with aggressive rioters that's what's going on you got people with their shirts off throwing firecrackers at the officers see what people don't understand is the officers aren't doing nearly as much as what they can do what they have the capability of doing you see what i'm saying most of those right most of those police officers that show up to contain those riots all they have is a shield and a helmet the police officers have a large variety of tactical equipment that they can choose from that can allow them to engage those rioters offensively but because that doesn't look appeasing optically police officers don't do it but personally i feel like officers should be doing more i think that they're not i think that they're not doing enough to contain the rioters you see, you know, sometimes they do a they do a few arrests, a good amount of arrests, but to actually get these rioters to understand what's going on and that the peace of society comes first before your feelings, I think that police officers aren't doing enough, not engaging rioters enough in an offensive matter, and I think that if they had the support of the people and the, and the support of their leadership. They would be able to do that without fear of prosecution or anything like that. But no, she's completely wrong, though. It's not peaceful protesters and then angry cops marching up to peaceful protesters, beating them up. It's these rioters and looters breaking into stores, these rioters and looters throwing Molotovs, throwing firecrackers at police officers, setting cars on fires on fire that get police involved and have to contain the incident or contain the situation tear gassing and shooting rubber bullets you think that does she think that they're just doing that for no reason and pepper spraying and tasing and literally ramming their police cars into crowds of people i want to see one video i haven't seen one video where that's actually happened i've seen videos where police officers are going maybe three miles an hour trying to get through a crowd of people but i've never seen a police officer at full speed 50 to 60 miles an hour plow through a group of protesters and if, if that were to happen that would be on replay on every mainstream network and i think she knows that deep down inside then what do you expect the protesters to do like really put yourself into the shoes of those protesters and think what would you do how would you react would you just stand there and take it peacefully and calmly that's literally like if someone was punching you and punching you and punching you and punching you and then finally you decide to punch back and they're like whoa why are you getting violent like that's the same thing do i wish for violence or wish for people, innocent people to get hurt or for businesses to be destroyed. And make sure that you clarify with that, these innocent people and businesses getting destroyed, I think maybe a large majority of innocent people and businesses getting destroyed are black owned businesses and bystanders who are at the protest or who are in the, vicinity of the riots who happen to be black those victims black small business zone small small businesses that get burnt down during the riots black owned does she know that i doubt it absolutely not it makes me so sad and it just hurts my heart so much that i know so many of you guys are probably in neighborhoods where protests are going on outside of your homes and you don't feel safe and you feel very scared right now and 
that makes me so sad that's not what i or i'm assuming any of the protesters want right now the problem is yeah they do they want to the peaceful protesters don't want that but the rioters and looters they absolutely want that they love the chaos they take advantage of the chaos because it's a greater opportunity to be able to get gucci purses to be able to get tvs computers without any type of contesting from or any type of contest from the police officers you even had i believe i don't know her name but she has red dreadlocks in the video and i believe she's the leader of the chicago chapter of black lives matter and she said flat out on the local news that she doesn't care if the looters rob a gucci or a louis she said that's reparations that's reparations and that's in my opinion how a lot of the people who claim to be protesting in the name of black lives matter feel and some of those protesters are white majority i think majority of the protesters that i've seen on mainstream media are white and she's saying that oh we're just they're just peaceful protesters look at seattle look at oregon they have no control over the over over seattle the government the state government of oregon has no control over that state antifa is taking over over there on the west side so i don't know if this girl still feels the same way i think she made this video last year like mid last year maybe she informed herself maybe she educated herself since then she seems intelligent but she just doesn't to me seem like she has all the facts or at least at the time that when she made this video is that people have been peacefully protesting racism and police brutality for years like literally mlk's whole movement was to fight racism with peace and just with your words and your presence and not using violence but that was the 1960s and now it's 2020 and the same shit is happening like people are still getting killed no that's wrong back in martin luther king's day they used to hose down protesters for doing nothing for holding hands and it was completely authorized nowadays you have protesters i don't even call them protesters the police are only engaging rioters and looters and sometimes it's visually unappealing but when you got people killing other people whether it's black or white it doesn't matter when you got people looting and robbing people yeah you need police you need police there and this girl knows she's not going in chicago at, at, at 10 o'clock at night to go protest she knows that why because they will probably rob kill and probably rape her if she did that that's why you have to have police and police can't be all sweet and kind that's why you have to have in some cases aggressive police to help prevent these rioters from getting too out of control and to limit the collateral damage limit the destruction of the government property and limit the amount of uh civilian casualties as well innocent people are still getting killed because of the color of their skin so lie so if protesters feel that they need to resort to violence or vandalism or stealing then i can understand it as a way but will you participate in it oh uh, probably not why because you're a law-abiding citizen is that why you see what i'm saying the left always they always approve of or they always create excuses for these rioters and looters but i never see I, I guarantee you they won't shoot a video they won't have any kind of footage out of them actually in these riots or actually in these protests at night you never see these these people out why because they know deep down what's really going on they know that it's not about race and police brutality it's about the new retro jordans that just came out that i have a chance of getting white person it is not my place to tell black people how to protest or how to grieve or just how to you absolutely can you could say this is the law based on the law this is how a protest a peaceful protest is defined you breaking in stores you breaking in louis you breaking in nike Foot Locker. that is not within the guidelines 
that are set forth by the law. Therefore, you cannot protest in this way. This is considered looting. This is considered a riot. You absolutely can. You don't have to be a certain color to tell somebody that they're breaking the law. It's not just black people. And even black people can tell white looters and white rioters that they're breaking the law. It's not about black or white. It's about what's right and what's wrong. To fight back. Also very important to note that a lot of the vandalism and the looting that's going on is not being done by black people. I have seen so many videos yeah, yeah, of black that. people that black lives being ended then be All right, you guys get the point. I don't want this video to be too long, but um I think her name is Maddie Sidlick. She her channel is a cosmetology channel, so it kind of makes sense that she's not really politically informed or politically aware. But this is what I'm talking about. This is why it, it's important to be informed on what's going on politically. It's part of the reason why I started this channel. Um, a lot of people, they make definitive statements about what's going on as far as black people and the relationship and their relationship with police officers and First thing people have to understand is that black people are not a monolith. Black people aren't all the same. You know, I'm not the same as the next black man, and that person isn't the same as the next black man. The fact is, is you have people who don't care about the laws that we live by every day that keep us safe. They don't care about those laws. They resist the police. They don't have a sense of a self accountability. And that's why they're either dead or in jail. And that's the same for any criminal. It doesn't matter whether they're white or whether they're black. I hope that this girl has done a little bit more research since she made this video. And I don't know if she's still, I hope she doesn't feel the same, but you know, don't let the left try to push radical left ideology on you don't let them try to push critical race theory make you feel like just because you're white that you're somehow inherently racist you're inherently responsible for poor blacks who live in the inner city you are responsible for going above and beyond to try to assist black people or to acknowledge racism in America. The, all critical race theory does and all the radical left try to do is perpetuate racism in America. Because as I said in many of my videos, it's the division by race that fuels the left's agenda. And you can see that if you just, all you have to do is go to Joe Biden's campaign all you got to do is go to Hillary Clinton's campaign. If racism truly didn't exist in the world, what would those candidates be running off of? Joe Biden, he ran his entire campaign off of immigrants at the border, off of police brutality against blacks. And that's it. And that's how you know that this idea of white supremacy systematic racism is just a false narrative perpetuated by the left but that's just my two cents on this guys i could be wrong about this but i don't think i am let me know what you guys think in the comment section box below like this video share this video subscribe to my channel for more content